KJ and Lions. KJ Carson and John Lyons right now on WEEI. At that juncture, after they had come out of Germany, not because of the game in Germany and the loss to the Indianapolis Colts, but at that point, the conversations I had indicated strongly that the Patriots were going to part ways with Bill at the end of the season and a decision had been made. Has he done enough in the five weeks since to change it or as ownership scrutinizes the situation, do they say, are we setting ourselves up to be a better team next year? Is this what's good for the football team? And that's a question that I think they certainly have to answer before they make the ultimate decision on Bill and actually follow through with it. So you can make a decision. You and I can both decide to you know, jump off a cliff. But if we both get to that cliff, I go, Ross, it's pretty hot. It's kind of windy. Do you want to come back tomorrow when it's less windy? <laughs> KJ and Lions, W-E-E-I. Good Saturday to you. We're going to play Rookie Weatherman here later. But, John, that's Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston, saying, look, yeah, I made these comments a few weeks ago about Germany, but now I'm going to come back to him after all this noise. And I say, John, this is really the start of something, I would say, diabolical from the writer's perspective. And I'll get into that in a second. How you doing? How you feeling about what is going to be probably the biggest subplot in Patriots history in in, in the last 25 years, tomorrow's game. Yeah, I would put it up there with that Tennessee Titans playoff game after the 2019 season in January of 2020 when there was a pretty strong feeling across New England that that was going to be Tom Brady's last game if they were to lose. The difference here is there's a strong feeling it could be Bill's last game, win or lose, because it's the end of the season. So that one had a little bit more suspense attached to it because it was the postseason. But honestly, KJ, I think you can look at tomorrow is probably the most bittersweet game in the history of the Patriots franchise because there's going to be a lot of appreciation for everything that Belichick has done, but there's also going to be disappointment that this team is, you know, going into the game four and twelve and we're at where we're at. KJ in line, 617-779-7937, text line 37937. We're getting into the Patriots deep into the woods. Let's go to David in the car. David, thanks for hanging on. You're on the air. Hey, good evening, guys. Thank you for taking the call. Yeah. So so on the whole Patriots thing, I think, you know, the way I look at it as a Patriots fan, season holder and everything else is this. Um, We want to see changes. We want to see the, the team, the organization get better. Part of us want to see Belichick go. Part of us doesn't. Is it the right time for him to go? I don't think it is, and this is why I say that. Okay, We're not just missing. It's not just the last four years that we need to look at what happened and not doing well. The problem is you didn't have a quarterback. You don't have receivers. You don't have an O-line. You don't have other good coaches. And and I think this is the Patriots are not ready to move on from Belichick because there's nobody else out there who can come in who is going to take a team that's already established with good players, you know, uh, key players, you know, good receivers, you name it, all, all the positions, and take them to the playoffs right away. So you're going to be rebuilding not only a team, you're going to be rebuilding coaches and organization from scratch. It's going to be years before we see anything decent. And, and Dave, I don't think us Patriots fans, I think we can handle that. David, thanks for the call. You know, John, David makes a great point, and in my hand, for some reason, it was almost like, you know, you're like, maybe I should bring my Bible to Sunday school today just in case there's a message to me. In my hand, I have my autographed copy of War Room from Michael Holly, and if you look very closely, it's a great book, by the way. KJ, comma, thanks for your consistent kindness and support, Michael Holly. It was an interesting exchange in the elevator at 20 Guest Street. Funny exchange as well. But I go to where the color inlets inlay starts. You remember that you, if you if you're not familiar with the book or you are familiar with the book, get to page one twenty two and then come the color inlays. And the very first color inlay, and this goes to what David is saying, Mike writes, Michael writes, Bill Belichick had big ideas about turning the Browns into winners. He had an all star cast on his coaching and personnel staffs, but when it came time to bring his scientific player evaluation system to the field, he wasn't surrounded by enough of the right players. Now, can we say that Bill Belichick is in the situation that he's in right now because of the failure of the quarterback of the last three years? Uh, not entirely, but Wait, yeah, that's it, a wait, huge it, part it, of it. No, I know that's, that's a huge part. A huge part of it. I mean, not entirely, though. And, and look, I appreciate the call from David as well, but it felt 
a little contradictory because he was saying you need to rebuild, you need to start over and rebuild the whole coaching staff and all the players. Well, that is the time when you would make a change at head coach. Like, that's how it works. So if you think you need to rebuild the entire operation, then that's probably when you would hire a new coach. If you think, like I do, that there is a playoff caliber defense already and you just need to change who is bringing in and developing offensive personnel, then there's a stronger case to keep them around. But if you think they need an entire rebuild from front office to coaching staff to players in at least two th- or three, two phases of the game, if not all three, then why would you keep around the guy that put everything in place that got you to this point? So I think there it's interesting, KJ, because I do think there is a pretty big – segment of Patriots fans that agree with David and that do not want Bill to be fired. And I think they've been kind of overshadowed by the very vocal people who want Bill gone. But I think the people were saying that Zappi might not be as bad as Mac Jones. (laughs) Like, I I think, yeah, it's similar to that, I guess. But it's it's something where if you think they really need to tear everything down, then you wouldn't keep the guy here who built the house that you want to tear down. Right. If you think they're closer Right. If you think, hey, they they need to figure out off like offense and change things offensively. Right. Well, then, okay, I think that's more of an argument to keep them around. But if you say they need to change everything, well, then that's that's when you would make a change. Yeah, I think the argument is more so gradual. I think everybody can get on board. Right. If you've given like different choices, do you make immediate change, gradual change, no change at all? Right, I think the biggest number is going to be the gradual change, but the gradual change can't be over five years. I've been a person that says the, the, the Patriots had about a five-year window from when Tom walked out the door, and here we are a year away from that, and I'm still sticking to him that saying, look, after five years, if you're not happy with the results that you have, in year four, you're making the preparations to say, this is who we're targeting. This is going to be the person who calls the shots. We want to get more control over everything that starts from the personnel down to the coach, so we probably don't want to bring in a coach that's going to be making personnel decisions. Like, I don't think that's something you can say, all right, we're still on the fence about it here in week 18, and we still have the draft where we might have to start all over from scratch getting another quarterback. That's why I think there's still another year on Bill before he's gone versus this Monday morning thing. And I think that's a lot social media, John. 617-779-7937, text line 37937, KJ and Lions. Still to come, the Patriots Led Zeppelin parody song for tomorrow's game. Let's go to Hank and Hanover. Hank, thank you so much for calling KJ and Lions. You're on the air. Ooh. Brian in Providence, thank you so much for calling KJ and Lions. You're on the air. Hey, guys, how's it going? Excellent. Uh, I don't know what everybody's all surprised for. I mean, did you think it was going to last forever? 20, 20, 23 years of the most dominant football ever. I mean, and now it's going to end. I mean, the Yankees won World Series without Babe Ruth, you know. I mean, and Bill isn't tall and say all, and he's proven it since, since Brady's left. So yeah, I but football and free agency is different. Here. Baseball, you couldn't get up and leave your team until the Kurt Flood, Kurt Flood case. But what I'm saying, 70s. what I mean, though, what I mean, though, is that, I'm using that as an analogy, the Yankees still won without the greatest baseball player at the time, and they still managed to win World, World Series, and I think the Patriots are going to do a little, you know, a little thing here. And maybe five and seven years, they're going to be crap for eight years, and then they'll get back to normal again. Brian, Not could you like take? Could you take? Could you take? Could you take the Patriots potentially being bad for seven out of ten straight years? Out of, out of ten straight years, seven or eight bad years. Me, because hey, it doesn't matter to me because I'm a Giants fan, dude. Oh, so, well, but, oh, thanks for the I'm call. Sorry, say Brian. Yeah, yeah, so, you know. Brian might be the guy who puts the toilet paper on backwards, even though the patent shows you that clearly the toilet paper comes forward. Right, John? I, I have no idea where you're going with that, KJ. You do you put your toilet paper coming frontwards or backwards up that you don't frontwards, but I, yeah. I don't I don't get I don't get He's the, a Giants fan yeah. calling about all this stuff yeah. he doesn't care. Like so he's I mean a his point toilet. though about like and that's the thing, and we're gonna talk more about this as the show goes on, but I, there's a segment of people in New England who feel all, and, and some of them call themselves Patriots fans, and they it seems like they're almost excited that this is ending now and that there's going to be, like, to me, Even that's that's, that's kind of gross. Like, look, I understand, I, and we've talked about this many times before. We'll talk about it again today. I think there is real justification for Bob Kraft to make a change if he wants to make a change. 
But I think if you're an actual Patriots fan or someone that appreciates football, you yeah. should be looking at this run with gratitude and not a firing with glee. And I think that's a – to me, like I said, there's a segment of people that are looking at this almost excited that they're going to get rid of Bill, and I just think that's pretty gross. I mean, after the run that was here for 24 years, that's never going to be duplicate. Like, what happened the last 20 years is never going to happen again. At, I don't think at in all. any sport. I don't like, think probably, there's any yeah, sport. You're probably right. Probably not in any sport, but definitely not in the NFL. The pairing of the best coach and the best quarterback in the history of the sport. It's never going to happen again, and it should be appreciated. Now, if Kraft feels that he has justification to make a move, which, look, I think there is justification. Fine. Yeah. I, I will accept that, but I will look at it with appreciation on the way out instead of the people that are just excited and, and gleeful to, to get rid of him. KJ in line, 617-779-7937, text line 37937. John, I can't remember a time where the actual game is a triitiary thought. Let's go to Thomas in Western Mass. Thomas, thank you for calling KJ in line. good Saturday to you. Yes, hello? Yes, you're on the air. So my view is, you know, Kraft and Belichick have always had the modus operandi of basically cutting players early whether it be Brady or Welker. I mean, you go on down the line, there's like 10 or 20 players that they got rid of before It's probably they like were 100, done. actually. Yeah, there's, the, there's, yeah. A, there's so a field full of them. Why did Belichick deserve any different when he cut players early? That's my view. Thanks for the call. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, look, it's a fair the point. Theory, it's, right? a, it's a fair point, though, right? Like, I mean, they cut guys a year earlier, traded guys a year earlier, and it was one of the things that made them successful for 20 years. Like, they deserve credit. They cut lawyer Malloy so Rodney Harrison and Eugene Wilson can have a bigger role, and they won back-to-back Super Bowls doing it, right? Like, they let Wes Welker go so Julian Edelman could become a bigger part of the offense, and he won three Super Bowls, including a Super Bowl MVP. Like, those, those are just two examples and I know they didn't always work out. Sometimes well, they wish they had, you know, kept certain players. But, like, I do understand the point. It is something they've done for 20 years and helped make them make them successful. So, John, outside of Tom Brady, right, all those players you mentioned are not the greatest of all time at what they do, right? So, But there you, were Hall of Famers in there that they let go of. Great, early. but Belichick is the but. greatest coach of all time. Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Sure. Right? So the Brady situation is always going to be discussed like the chicken and the egg. I get that. But anything below that, you really can't compare what you're going to do to Belichick versus what Belichick did to them, despite if it looks the same. I know it's not fair, but damn, life isn't fair. Look, we're up against the break. We've got tons of calls. we still got Jim, Mason, Steve, and Hank. He's back, so we'll get to your calls right after we get into trending. KJ and Lions, WEEI, 617-779-7937. Text line 37937. Let's trend with John Lyons.